Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ravinia Festival. Please note that the taking of photographs, including the use of camera phones and the use of audio or video equipment, is strictly prohibited. As a courtesy to the artist and your fellow patrons, please ensure that all mobile phones, pagers, and anything with an on-off switch have been silenced. We appreciate your consideration. Thank you for making it a great day at Ravinia. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for being here. We're really excited about our second and final master class of the summer. Um, I'd like to just encourage you all to look at your programs and see the upcoming events. We're really excited. We've been here. This is our end of our second week. It's hard to believe. Um, on Sunday, on Monday evening, we have our uh, Spanish concert, Canciones, and it's been curated by our, our own Javier Arrebola, who's been here for probably six years now, and he's a terrific pianist and coach. I mean, you've all heard him, and he's put together a beautiful program. We're really looking forward to that. We also have an upcoming concert commemorating the 100th anniversary of World War I and some terrific songs um, that were composed during that time. And our own Corey Ellison has put that together and she's been coaching. And then last but not least, we have a Bernstein concert on the final day and we're really excited about that as well. Um, you know, James Collins has been coming to Ravinia since 1977, I believe. That's been a long time. And it's always, it feels right when he's back here um, in the park. And we're so thankful that he's always been so dedicated to young singers and fostering young singers. He's passionate, he married a singer, right? And she's on our faculty, Jennifer Ringo. Um, he's done so much to help young singers. He has such great advice. His wisdom is always so interesting, I know for all of you to hear too. He's a great friend of mine. He's a great friend of Ravinia. And ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Maestro James Conlon. Hi, everybody. Great to see you all. Uh, Kevin puts the bar far too high. I'm not so wise, I don't know anything about that, but I hope not to disappoint him and, and you. Uh, you know I love doing these classes, and uh, every year uh, during the years of my, when I was music director, I saw the most amazing young talents come through here, and now it gives me great pride to see them in some of the leading opera houses in the world, and I think Ravinia should be proud of that, Staines should be proud of that, and you should be proud of that, because you all you know, make up a part of the take a, a great part of this wonderful institution. Uh, so uh, have some of you seen my master classes in the past? You know how I do them? Okay, you participate, you're a participant, you, you participate at times. Uh, so because I, I like to, I mean I do teach, the, I don't teach, I coach uh, the young singers, uh, but I want you to see what goes into it. So some of my remarks will be directed in your, in, uh, to, in your direction so that you can understand a lot, some of the things, uh, some of the things that are issues for us, uh, vocal issues, linguistic issues, dramatic issues, presentational issues. And you know, on a just uh, a different level, this is not dissimilar to what uh, one does as a conductor uh, who is conducting operas. I do not like the term opera conductor I, because you know, once upon a time, Every conductor conducted opera and symphony, and if they had a position, their main uh, position was the opera house. And so nowadays you talk about opera conductors because this is very bad, because a good conductor, great conductor, should be able to do both. I do remind everybody that Toscanini and Mahler, uh, and just about everybody, Walter, Klemperer, Karian, all of them, they're, they're, they, they all knew both areas totally. And so I don't like opera conductors. But if you are a conductor who is conducting an opera, one should have a, a firm base on the functioning of the human voice so that you can actually help your singers be better and how to help them give their best performances. So some of what you m might be seeing today is not dissimilar from what I might be doing in, a, uh, in, in the course of a production of more, you know, more mature artists. 
You just say it differently when they get too mature because they don't like the, <laughs> they don't like dentistry the same way. Okay. All right. So these brave young folks are going to uh, going to submit themselves now to me. And, <laughs> and let's see. First, we've got uh, Niels Nielsen and Javier Arrebola at the panel. Oh, there you go. Oh, every, every singer has given me three choices, and I chose, uh, we may hear three pieces, we may hear two pieces, we may hear one piece. Depends on the piece, it depends on uh, what, what the issues are. So, the, uh, we decided on Schubert, right? That's what you whispered into my ear the other day, that was your stem. Okay, so this is a Schubert song, it's called uh, Doppelgänger, uh, and, uh, well, you first you'll sing it, then we'll talk about it. Niels.
Okay, so uh, believe it or not, he's a tenor. Uh, he's singing down. This is a piece that's written in, <laughs> so low for the most part, right? You, mm -hmm. Well, I'll let you show off some high notes la later on. Uh, but this is all down the lower, lower register, so that's quite a challenge for a tenor, which of course is a high voice. Uh, th this, like as many Schubert songs are, it's sad. Okay, uh, so you've got the, 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 great, the great song cycles, Winterreise, The Winter's Journey, you have Schöne Müllerin, which is about a, a beautiful young daughter of a, mill, of a miller. Should be happy, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> Schwanengesang, which is a swan song, which is, as you know, is the, the swan dies, making sort of singing or making a noise that's become known now, so the swan song. So it's, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a general, general tragedy about uh, Schubert in this song, when you say it's got heavy tragedy in it. So, so the first thing is uh, to, to ride that, and you do that very well, and of course you've got a great pianist here, so that, that the, piano, the piano part is as, as important as, as, as the singing. So a lot of it's about delivery, and uh, uh, delivery and text. Uh, it's very well done, your German is good. I'm going to ask you to do a few things for me a little bit differently. Uh, uh, particularly, uh, I always talk about the length of vowels and the consonants. Uh, there are words that have two consonants and there are words that have one consonant. Now, every language is a uh, series of vowel, consonant, vowel. Uh, then there are languages, I guess, like Welsh, that have five consonants all in a row, uh, and sometimes in Czech, that's all. But the relationship of vowel to consonant is the essence of using the language in its most, uh, in its most expressive way, and the length of the vowel uh, changes. When there is one consonant, the vowel is long. When there are two consonants, the vowel is slightly shorter and the consonant is longer. It's as if there's this much space and it's either going to be filled by a consonant or not. Now, you guys know all this, but this is for everybody out there. Uh, there's just that much space, and so you're either going to fill it with a vowel and a consonant. And it would be really simple if that's all there was to it. But the, but the part that's not simple is that the voice actually only travels on a vowel. For, uh, so it's not going to travel on a consonant. So, there may be words that you speak when you speak. You have a short vowel and a longer consonant. But what do you do when you have a slow song like this and you have a word like that, like still or something like that, which is still. You're still. You see, I go right to the L. I go right to the consonant if I'm speaking. But, I, but if you have a long note and you have to sing still, you have to do something that, but to still represent the proportions of the way you say it. And that's one of those things. I also want you to give me slightly stronger final consonants Consonants are very important in German, particularly the ones at the ends, ends of words, okay? Um, why don't you just uh, start, you start directly on the fifth bar there, still. And, that's, and the first word is still. So we, we don't want to do still, still, still. still. Now, the great, the, the beauty of L is that it's what we call a voiced consonant. That means you can actually, it makes a sound. If you put, if you put your mouth, L, do that, L. You hear, you can actually make a sound, and it's very now, now, try to do that with T. You see, it doesn't work. That's an unvoiced consonant. That means because it, that you, can't actually, you can't actually sing it or speak it. But still, the L can be longer. OK, here we go. Yeah, that's different. No, I want still, still. Practice that, even if it's an exaggeration. And then don't elide it to ist. Still, ist, die Nacht. Try, try to give me what, glo what we call a glottal on okay. ist, yeah? Very good. Now I want you to long di nacht, not di nacht. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to make the note longer. I just simply meant not to clip the vowel. Mm. Di nacht. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do so much <laughs> if you don't want to, but the T I have to have.
Okay. Now, the word Gassen, Gasse, in, it's mostly Austrian rather than the German, but it means a, t a, a small street. So that's Gasse, Gassen. And it's going to rhyme later with Verlassen, which is also. So here we have to shorten the vowel slightly. Now, it's a long note and it's a slow tempo, so it's going to be a long Gassen, but you have to show me that S, that double S. Gassen. Yeah. Last thing about Nacht, you sing Nacht. You can actually stop singing and put the T on at the end. Okay. Try that. I'll tell you where I learned that later. Right, so here I mean, auf dem, I would close the A more, dem selben, mm -hmm. dem selben. Now, doch steht, doch steht, separate those two entities, doch steht noch das Haus. Okay. Yeah, right there, doch. I just mentioned to closed vowel. What does that mean? Dame a. That's a. That's an e in in German. A, a. Uh, there are two. There are two ways to pronounce that vowel. And so-called open, which is a, and so-called closed a. So they're those, and they're very important because sometimes just a simple difference in that vowel is going to change the change the meaning of the word. Okay, so you don't want to you don't want to miss that. A plat. Yeah. Think pla. Mm -hmm. I promise to tell you where I learned that. I learned it in Hunter College in uh, the 1960s. I was a teenager. I won't say more than that about what age I was. But um, I went to the two of the most extraordinary evenings in my life. I've never forgotten them to this day. Um, one was a complete Winterreise of Schubert, and the other one was the Schumann Dichterliebe, and Britain songs sung by Peter Pears and played by Benjamin Britten. And it was a, a lesson I will never forget. First of all, uh, nobody had told me just yet that Britain was one of the greatest pianists in the world. I mean, he was an amazing pianist. And the sound and the fluidity that came out of that piano was something that gives me goosebumps still when I remember it. And I think it was Peter Pears, who had a very strange voice. And, uh, and I didn't really fully appreciate it until I saw him. And he had magnetic capturing of the orchestra of the audience, and this you need to employ in a song like this, which is very static, like that. In other words, you have to bring everybody in. Now, he had this trick of putting his, of his, he used to make, do uh, very soft tones, pianissimo, and you'd hear him make a diminuendo to nothing, or almost nothing, and then you'd hear the, the consonant. He was always very clear at the end of it, like sha, and halfway through, a concert, I finally figured out what he was doing. He actually stopped singing. So he'd do a word like shots, he would go, sha. And he did it so well that you could have sworn that he had made a perfect diminuendo to, to, uh, to an infinitesimal level, and you, but you have to do it well. Now you have that, that that's, a, that's a challenge for you. Think of it in places like the Zelbenplatz. 
You don't have to do it perfectly now, but I want you to have this in your armory of, of effects. Okay? Auf demselben, yeah? There you go. Okay. Get the Peter Pierce Award, 2018. I want a double R. Start. Start. Those are three consonants. R, R, T. Okay? That means a short vowel. Und start. Und start in yes. Good support now, good support, go. Und ring die Hände. Not strong enough, especially after that line. Now here's the challenge. You're singing in the basement for yeah. the whole time, and then you come up here and you gotta sing it. Now usually it's the baritones who ha hate that because that's the part that's difficult for them. This is the opposite. Now you're in your register, but you've also just been singing for several minutes down here. So the, I believe the trick is you have to be sure that you are grounded and you're singing pianissimo from, from the bottom. In other words, you're, you're, you're not just sort of uh, you're not, you're, you are supporting fully for everything in the bottom and everything that's soft. And then don't give more when you get up to the top. Don't, you don't have to, because why? It's louder already just because it's a high note. Okay. okay, so I want, just sing the previous, just the previous line so that you can get yourself in place. How about, uh, uh, let's say, und start. Yeah. Und start in die Höhe. Und start in die Höhe. It's a clear end of words. Mir graust es. Mir graust es. Wenn ich sein Antlitz sehe, der im Mond zeigt That, the, the difficulties are all done after that. Yeah, the rest is easy. Start. Go to the L. Start. Okay. Yeah. Support from the bottom. Just on start. Start. Oh, do the line. Yes. Now, this is a man who's disappointed in love, obviously. He's ready to, leave, <laughs> ready to lose his life, right? Let's show somebody in love, in French, and that's Manon. You want to do Manon? Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's going to end up badly, too, of course, but it's only... <laughs> it's, not, it's not Act 5 yet. <laughs> so this lovely man has fallen in love with Manon, who is a young lady who came from the country and has made a very rapid rise in society with the charms that uh, she was born with. And uh, so this nice man named Degrieux falls in love with her, right? And uh, it's an on and off again thing because he, anyway, uh, it is. And uh, he's become a priest momentarily. Mm -hmm. He's singing this particular love song at the altar in his frock and all that. She's going to visit him eventually. Yeah. Okay. 
So, this is a dream. stop you because I want to work on this tone with you. Yeah. Wah, now you have to really support well mm -hmm. and don't change the position. Don't go back in your throat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a good way not, uh, well, you find your position. It's your Italian position. I'm sure you've heard that. Yeah. Uh, and then do not go back here. The Italians have a word in ingolata, which means back in your throat. Okay. Right? You don't want that. Yeah. Now, what, uh, what, uh, the effect is made. It's not about decibels. It's about the health of the, of the sound mm -hmm. at the beginning in the middle and at the end. So you don't want to go below the level at which you can support the sound. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just try that one. Support, 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 support. Keep going. Support, support, support. Okay, excellent. That was much better. Now let's get to the end of that bois. We're just going to do au fond des bois. Okay, bois. I well, I can't sing and I don't have a voice. Yeah. You can and you have a voice. But as I get to the end of the bois, I don't let that corrode. Wah, wah. It has to end. You have to e have to end in it with an integrated note. Yeah. Au fond. This is better. Now, okay. Now, as you're holding it, making a crescendo, don't push. Yeah. Just let it blossom. Without force.
Very good ending. Good. Now, uh, uh, if I had another half an hour, we'd work on all of that and the French and all that, but I know you have a good French coach here, so I'm yeah. going to let it le leave that to somebody else. Uh, but I want to leave one thought with you, Bob. Now, when you, when you sustain, when you sustain, you must work the whole time down here. And uh, never push out, ne never push, never push. It does not make your voice larger. It does not make a tone louder. It may feel louder to you, but in fact, it doesn't because the voice does not travel on that. The voice travels on focus. Now, you sang a beautiful high note, and, uh, which is appropriate in the place you sang it because it was very small. That's what I want when you're not up on the top as well, so that you're keeping a small, focused, high, uh, high vocal. Could you just do at the bottom, I think it's at the bottom, like, car, il, car il manque une chose, yeah? Car il manque une chose, il faut... Stay there, don't change, and don't change position, now go. Not beautiful? That's the secret. Right there. Problem is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Kevin is going to sing. Five minute pause. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Something's gone wrong. No, no, I think everything's good. Did you hear Kevin sing at the recital the other day? Yeah. <laughs> Do there was a do I got a doctor's call. I had there was a doctor in the house. Conductors have to be on call all the time to uh, put out little fires. So I just put one out. So we're all fine. Okay, we're ready to go ahead. I think it's Antonina, right? Uh, Antonina Ch Chekhovsky. Yeah, there she is. Okay, Antonina Nikolai. Okay. Hi, Antonina. Now, uh, per request, Antonita is going to sing one of her favorite scenes. It's one of my favorite scenes, and it's probably a lot of people's favorite scene. Uh, it's very long, and because it's long, I'm going to not let you sing everything. I'm going to stop in the middle. Okay? okay. It's Tatiana's uh, letter scene from uh, from Anyagin, and she is writing a letter. She has fallen in love with this excru excruciatingly handsome, charming man who's just shown up at her house, and of course, the action, uh, the act of uh, of a young girl from a country in the, in the society in which she lived to actually write a letter uh, declaring her love to a man is unheard of. And it is a very bold and brave act. Um, we also know what will happen later. It is one of the few operas where um, the two main characters, uh, uh, Anjegin and Tatiana, do not die at the end. <laughs> Nevertheless, it's tragic. <laughs> And uh, there was a tenor, he died earlier in the, <laughs> in the album. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> well, we all die later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be, she's going to start this, she's going to start this letter, and then I'll take it, uh, chop it apart. Okay.
about that first of all. Now, uh, you don't need any help with, with your Russian. You're Bulgarian, right? Ukrainian. Ukrainian, that's even better. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, you don't need me to help you with your Russian. No. But I can help you with some other things, all right? Okay. So, um, so what's happening? She starts to conceive the letter in her uh, in her, her mind, and that's what's going on, Nikolai, as you're playing that wonderful uh, wonderful interlude there. Now, I'm going to work backwards. The first thing, if you want your conductor to love you, uh, if you look at the second bar of 40, Nikolai, but yet, yeah. So I'm going to count in eights, and I would like you to count with me, okay. because it is a very difficult uh, bar for the orchestra to play together. So your conductor will adore you uh -huh. if he's not he or she is not stuck up in the air trying to find you like that. All right. So uh, why don't we play number 40, Nikolai? Right. That's so all. One. And then I'll slow into this. Three, add. Um. And, and then you're in place, all right? Then I can relax, all right? But if you would continue the same tempo, nevertheless, because I'm not, I'm not going to conduct that bar. God. No. Okay, and then you go in tempo. Then I take it off. Right. Shall we try that again? Okay. All right. Here's number forty. Three and unit. Forty. Nikolai, I'm in eight. Rum bum. Right. One more time. One. The same place, so. Arido vibrato di pompa. One and two. Sto sam noi pom. There we go. Okay, now. So, uh, Nicolai, may I say something too? From the andante, where you start, you have to construct that uh, with rubato, but with a big climax. We have to be able to see her mind going through this uh, uh, incredible passion. You know, I mean, she's this is a first love, and uh, so you know, think back to our adolescence where the whole universe got turned upside down, right? And we have to see that and feel that while you're playing. And we have to feel it from you as you, I mean, m maybe you start to write and you said, no, that's not it. That's not going to work. But whatever it is, we all have to feel that now. And Nikolai, if I can also mention that wh when we start at the beginning, play more of the chord than the beats because we need a harmony under this. And I want, uh, I would like longer, I mean, really sing the vowels here. Okay. It's excited, right? But we don't want to feel sky, right? We want So it's it's singing. All right? So just give us the last two bars there before before Puskai. No, I, I if you could take the energy, this burning passion, Puskai. So it starts with this instead of Okay, here's the aria. Puska, yeah. Okay. Feel it? Right. Two, one. Puska, fucking hell. Take over now. One more time. Fire. It's not that your tempo was impossible uh -huh. or wrong, but you know the orchestra can make a much better sound if they have time to, you know, get into their sing and sing. Mm -hmm. So that you don't want to you don't want to uh, exclude them from okay. that possibility. Yes. All right. Last time, Nikolai. So you have to. <laughs> 
I think you should take a breath after Bries Dieu, Bries Dieu, on, right? Okay. Yeah, you, first you're going to need it down here, mm -hmm. right? And it also makes perfect sense. Bries Dieu, Bries Dieu, entre de mort. You have to finish mm -hmm. strong, right? Okay. Okay, just back up. Pierre uh, Dieu, how about that? Yes, that's you. There you go, Nicolai. Take it. <laughs> You're a soprano, not an alto, but if you're going to sing this role, you have to have something down there. Don't push, okay. but uh, uh, you have a good chest voice. Do you have something to draw on down there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I meant your voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yes. Okay, so um, without pushing out on it, yes. just employ it here. Okay, then that's another reason of yes, dear, yes, dear. Now get ready for to use your chest when you go down. On prayer, on Yes, strong, strong. Boy. Now take over, Nikolai. I want you to restudy this niet sioneto. So that's a, that's an equally mm -hmm. Now afterwards, if you say I don't like any of that, well, fine, you're free to do it. But you can only choose if you choose later. It's not because you don't know how to do the text. Yeah. That's the text with yeah. the rhythm. Okay. So she says I don't know how to start, and so she starts writing. And here she is writing. So we do two bars before sachem, right? But um, actually, just if you don't mind playing the beginning, Nikolai, don't sing for a second. Uh, from the beginning of uh, this is her writing and sighing those are and she does that over and over again oh, okay now she's ready to start okay now two bars before there's such a and one That's a long letter. Yeah. <laughs> Two bars. So one. Very good. Okay. Now, because it's at the end. Zachem, zachem. You sing beautiful, and then I hear. I don't hear. I don't understand. It, it's. It doesn't read. Okay. You have to go slow enough. And sing the little notes. Okay. right? Vipassiet. Everything with vowels. And if it, the tempo is too fast, then you politely ask the maestro, maestro, can we go slide slower? Okay. The maestro probably will say whatever he wants to say. But zachem zachem vipassieti is different from zachem zachem vipassieti. I don't want just the main notes. I want yes. all the little notes. Okay. All right, with two bars before. Okay. okay? And one. Okay, 
forget, I'm going to say the same thing to her about uh, the consonants at the ends of words. Ah, okay. I need to understand it. Okay. okay. Now you can do a little bit better by thinking zachem, zachem, but give me energy. Vipasiti, vipasiti, vipasiti. Right? I don't want zachem, zachem. Okay. Okay. You may think it's exaggerated, uh -huh. but I need. Ba 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 ba, vipasiti. Right on it, Satya. And one. Nikolai. I think we'll start at the same place again, Nikolai. Two bars before Satya. Satya. Okay, so one. She really writes. Now and what? Bum 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 bum. Okay, so before T, before T, make a good break. Okay. It's in the text. You have two dots, right? Okay. Respect those little punctuation marks. Okay. We'll start this up. As you like. Nepra. Okay, that's lovely. Nikolai, give her the time to make a, to make a good pause. Slihala ti, right? Slihala ti. And you give her the time to breathe. Okay. okay. It goes slower than the preceding bars because there's a un poco animando, which means faster in Italian. So you have us, you start out moderato, moderately, right? Right? And now un poco animando, right? That's faster, 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 faster. And then is back in the original tempo, all right? So you should know all of these things, I'm sure you do. but. Uh, uh, discipline your own self and say, well, I like it this way. No, discipline yourself to the text. Mm -hmm. They were, after all, great composers and they usually knew what they were doing. So, yes. all right? So, moderate, slightly faster, moderate again. Okay, okay we're back at uh, moderato again. Okay. Bravo. Now, slightly faster. Finish forte. I'll tell okay. you why. Because if you want to reflect on what you've just said or done, do it in the next line. Mm -hmm. So that the orchestra finishes forte. Now, yeah. it's not a bad, I mean, it's not bad to be musical and to that, yeah. but just try this finishing song. You above you, then think. Body. Okay. All right, try that. Uh -huh, wherever you like to start. Yeah. Uh, bring, well, not just the end, just the end. Bring yeah.
Okay, good, two things here. Uh, Slava, don't double the consonant. Slava, right, not Slava. Slava, now, Shepnul, well, we just worked on it with Niels, about how to hold something uh, and then let it off where how you finish a note gives, uh, leaves a good impression. Mm -hmm. Or a bad impression. Yeah. <laughs> okay? You can do a perfectly wonderful note and then at the end uh, you go off or something and it ruins and then everybody doesn't hear the beautiful part, they hear the end. So, when you're running out of breath, stop when you get to 80%. Don't go all the way to the end, but you have no more breath left, you know? So we went, ah. You know, audiences, they feel it. When, mm -hmm. And we all feel you. See somebody who's not breathing. You feel uncomfortable. We, we want them to feel comfortable. Okay. So, I have no voice, okay? So, but that doesn't matter. Uh -huh. I stop when I'm ahead. I tell this all the time to the tenors, especially the Italian tenors who are singing their last notes, you know, and they want to show how long they can hold a note that, that makes them a man, you know, the longer the better, and then they're always here, oh, at the end, something to show that they're passionate. This is the worst possible taste, and it would be just better if they would sing the notes and finish it firmly. That's a much more satisfying. So we want to do the same thing, yes. all right? Especially when you're in piano, don't stick it in the back of your throat, right? Okay. okay? Slava. Shepnu, you're in a good place, so Shepnu, don't change your position. Say, stay, you know, stay. I want to say something about, about the, the Russian language, which is one of the most beautiful in the world, uh, presents a big challenge to operatic singing because many vowels are further back in, in the throat. And that's, uh, there's a conflict there, okay? And so, coming to mind, I mean, two of the greatest Russian singers in our times. Uh, one, Olga Barudina, and the other, God bless his soul, uh, uh, Dima Borostovsky, who sang, they sat, their placement was the Italian placement. And they were 100% Russian and you could understand every word, but their placement was, was, was uh, part of the secret of their greatness. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I know, it's a, I know, I know there's, a, there's a natural conflict between the two things, but you have to try to get closer to the Italian position. Yes. It's, it is better, okay? okay? Yes. It's not an accident that opera was invented in Italy, really? because the nature of the language, the nature of the language was, is the same nature it takes to sing. But you know this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but no, of course, it's, it's a, because it's against your nature. Yes. Yeah, but that's the challenge that you have. We Americans have other challenges when it comes to singing Italian and <laughs> things like that, I assure you. <laughs> All right, last time. Slava, yep. And then stop when you're ahead. Okay. All right, so now we go to four bars before Ktoti. Nicolai, okay? Supporting when it's soft. I want you to say, you speak directly to him, right? Yes. You know, say, you know, who are you? Are you my angel or are you going to be the devil that destroys me? You know, to talk to him, but, but we're in a pa in absolute passion of this. This is a magic moment. I want you to bring the audience in. We're not going to do it by singing loudly, right? You're going to make them draw them in. See if you can do that. Did you play the one bar before? Yeah. Slow and slow into. Now, you have to say kto, right? There's a K and a T, right? And so that's hard. Why? Because K is not a voiced syllable, a voiced consonant, right? You can't sing K, right? Try. If you succeed, let me know. All right. T. 
is not a voice consonant. You get, so you're sort of stuck, right? Ta, right. So my, 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 uh, my, my, there are two ways to, you can use what's called a shadow vowel, you know what that is, you sort of, you can put a slight vowel in the K. Another thing is to, is to uh, put your mouth in the position that you can sing K and sing to. In other words, to, to. So that you're in the position K, right? And say to. And there's a, you, you see what I mean? To. It's like nie, for instance. You see nie, you start by pushing your, your mouth in the position of nie, and you say nie, 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 right? Okay, so kto, it's, kto is much harder. You don't want to say kto because that's, that's not Russian. Yes. But kto, somehow or other, you've got to get them both in there. Okay. All right? I challenge you. Okay. All right. Mi re do si. Every word, exactly. Uh, so, and Nikolai, what I like to do is for the horn to respond a little faster, and she goes slowly. Every note, and especially those chromatic notes, every one of them vibrating. Right, uh, Ely. Can you get she up here? So it's not. Uh, it's not. Okay, so sing by ye, by ye, by You already have an E, nicely. My E, right? My E, stay there, stay there. My E, Samyen, Razrishi. Without a voice and not being Russian speaking, I can do that whole thing in one position. So you're, you're way ahead of me. You have a voice and you speak Russian. So, My E, okay? My E, Samyen, Razrishi. Did you hate that? No. I didn't. That's the one position. Okay, keep going, Nikolai. Okay, just a touch more bit, bit. Uh, no, just bits, so that we feel the beat. Bit, yeah, bit, bits more just, yeah. And one. Yeah, you know the the most important, the most expressive note is the is the note before the last. So when you sing to she, it's the B double flat. Mm -hmm. That should be the most intense. And uh, I, I I'm not feeling that. I'm feeling. I want to feel. That's the note. That's the chromatic line. That's where the it, that's where the most intense the intense. Can you try that? Yes. Oh, yeah. There you go. I want to understand especially because I'm going to try to make the woodwinds imitate you. Uh -huh. And if we don't have a clear definition, it doesn't, doesn't fit. Okay. 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 And they imitate. Okay, and then you go with the conductor now. And not. 
good. Now, 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 okay, now once again. Uh, no taki beach. I want to feel it. Yeah, you, I want to feel it. And there's an exclamation point on it, which means not only could you take a breath, I believe you should take a breath. Remember, commas, periods, exclamation points, question marks, usually imply a separation with what comes afterwards. No taki beach. Sudba, right? Sudbu, sorry. Okay, so not, and not too fast that we don't understand you, okay. all right? And more right hands and Nikolai, so we understand the, the harmony, okay? So right on, uh, no taki beat, yeah? One, two. Oh, my yeah, finish. Oh. Okay. okay, it's not as written. Okay. How about it? Okay. All right. Last time. Sorry. No because the orchestra has to play with you. Okay? Yeah, you know, before you can just sort of swim around in it and we wait for you, but not yeah. now, this fight, okay? okay? All right. Uh, from ba 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 Nikolai. So, and one. Ba ba pi ba 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 chest voice again, right? Yeah. All right, now we're also going to go slower where it says to go, uh, so, ubi zaslušeni uko. It's really in four at that point, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, and I would actually start to broaden. I know it says, accelerate. Now, it's the minister, it's like, omni nam, itoni, if joni, if you revi, ubi zaslušeni. I could, I would say broaden, mm -hmm. and then continue slow, all right? Uh, can we do Yajdu Tibia, Yajdu? Yep, and now, give me more, not more sound, but better support. Yajdu Tibia, Yajdu Tibia, right? Mm -hmm. And then don't give more on the B flat. Why? Because it's already high, so it's louder, right? <laughs> okay. So we want to hear Yajdu Tibia, Yajdu Tibia. It's the same. You're, you're, it's all down here. Okay. okay. Yajdu Tibia. And. Yajdu Tibia, Yajdu Tibia. For me, that's already much better. Okay. I don't know if you can, you, yeah. it doesn't matter if you can hear the difference. We can. Yeah. All right? Yajdu Tibia. And I, remember if you repeat, you repeat words in, in any language, the second time has to have a meaning. Because you Yajdu Tibia, Yajdu Tibia. That doesn't mean anything. I wait for you, I wait for you. I wait for you, I wait for you. I wait for you. No, I wait for you. I wait for you. Yajdu Tibia, Yajdu Tibia. We have to feel something. Now, maybe you take a breath, maybe you don't take a breath. But you have to show us that. Yajdu, Yajdu Tibia, Yajdu Tibia. Okay. And Don't worry too much about the last note because we're going to, we're going to, the orchestra's going to scream, yes. then, right? That's a big, big orchestra moment like the end of the symphonies. Okay, just show, this is so wonderful. Okay, uh, uh, Conchayo, 290. Conchayo, 
Okay. All right. Now, Nikolai. Ra da pa pa pi da 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 ti da pa pa pa. She's finished, and she says, "Come, chai. I'm done. I finished." But strach, you are you are shocked by yourself. I didn't feel anything. I want to feel. I want to feel that. Yeah. You've done it. Right. Okay. So the, here we go, Nikolai. So. Okay, cut Right on cut Did you know that? Yes, it's a cool. I don't feel it. I don't feel that you're ashamed or that you're scared or that. What have I done? Right? That's what I want to feel. Yes. I'm not feeling it. Okay. I'm feeling that you've been fabulous and you've gotten to the end of the aria. That's great. <laughs> but I want I want the emotions, all right? So conchai you want to get them. And you all know that Onegin is going to answer her the next day in person and absolutely humiliate her. Uh, which, uh, but, which uh, he comes in and he says, you know, I'm really not, it's not a good idea for you to marry me. And this is a big, it's a big question, an interpretive question. What would you have said to Tatyana if you have chosen to turn her down? Uh, there are those who said, well, you know, he actually explained it pretty clearly. He said, you know, I'm going to get bored. I'm, I don't, I'm not the marrying type. You're going to... He actually pretty much told the truth. And so, and yet, uh, she experiences it as a terrible humiliation. And um, Onegin, of course, is not the most sympathetic. He's very arrogant. He's very full of himself. Um, he's, in a way, Pushkin himself, you know, who was a genius. And so I guess he could get away with being that way. But the question is, um, I once asked one old Russian lady, I said, you know, what, what, should, what should he have done? He said, Hey, you should have come in there and slapped her and said, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and she, I said, she wouldn't have been humiliated? No, <laughs> she wouldn't have been. So I don't know. But then I asked the same lady some years later, and she said, well, the fact is he told her the truth. <laughs> so, you know, but there's the interpretation, just how, how should Onegin have treated And of course, you know, at the end of the story, Onegin's going to see her years later, and he's going to fall head in the, over heels in love with her, and it's too late because she's married extremely well. And she tells him she loves him, but she will not leave her husband. So that's the tragedy. The tragedy is that two ships passed in the night, timing was off, and, you know, that's life. Okay. All right. Hi. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Hi there. We haven't met. Hi there. Okay. Uh, what did we decide you're going to sing? Adalgisa. Adalgisa. Okay. Now we are in back in Roman times here. And this is a, this is a, Adalgisa is Norma's. Uh, sh well, she would be her rival. They both the, the, the same man has in love with her, but they get, but they uh, team up, right? Wouldn't right. you say? But they don't know that. Yet. They don't know that yet. This is too early. But later on, they're going to find out, out and they're going to really stick together. It's going to end tragically, of course, but anyway. It, it always does, all right? Okay, so this is the first time Adalgisa comes on the stage. Right? Yes, it is. Right. And, okay. uh, hello, my name is Simona Jenga, and here with Cameron this afternoon we've prepared 
heard Sgombra y del Sacra Selva, Adol Jesus Aria. Now, beautiful voice. Uh, you obviously speak Italian, right? You're Italian, yeah. Okay, so she, her Italian is impeccable. 
But I still have one or two things to say about the diction, because speaking your language, your own language, is one thing, and singing it is another, so there are, there are a few issues. Uh, but you have to fill up the stage. This is very difficult. It's not the easiest entrance to make as, no. as a character, because it's a very, as you can see, it's a very, it's a very uh, tranquil piece, very slow piece, and uh, you have to somehow or other mag uh, magnetically draw the audience to your attention after there's been already quite a lot going on. Disgusting. A lot of hollering and things, you know, <laughs> that's right. So this is, a, this is not an easy entrance, so, okay. And a lot of it also is what goes on in the orchestra. Uh, so I want you to start it again, and I'm very interested, I'm very interested in you telling us, me, them, the story, setting it up at the residency, because you really don't have an aria. It's a recitative. Uh, see, the, the, standard, the standard of the, of the bel canto operas, but of bel canto, bel meaning beautiful, canto meaning singing, it has, there's bel canto with a capital B and bel canto with a small b. The small b just simply means beautiful singing. So your first job is beautiful singing. Whatever else you do, acting, tearing your hair, uh, uh, throwing s furniture around the stage, none of that counts if you're not singing Beautifully. That's what makes bel canto, bel canto. Bel canto with a big B is a, is a, is a period uh, be, basically between 1800 and 1850. We refer to the operas written in that time where the concepts of singing beautifully were paramount. Uh, that's basically called the bel canto period. Now, it wasn't at the time. There was no such term because it was self-evident. All singing is supposed to be beautiful, right? Why else would you go to the opera? It's not beautiful. But the term was, it was, the term came into use when the period was actually coming to a close. But the, 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 the major figures, of course, Rossini was the father of all of it, and then the second two are Bellini, Norma, and Donizetti. Uh, and if, if you're around tomorrow night, there's a little bit of Rossini and Donizetti on the, in the pavilion. Uh, then Verdi will, Verdi will take that and then he will go beyond bel canto, where it's not just enough to sing beautifully, you've also got to make dramatic sense out of it. Now, it's already true, you do too, but it's a, gra it's a gradual process. And so, so whatever else there, the, what are the concepts of bel canto are beautiful, long, sustained singing, expressive, um, and the concepts are that your tones line up together, that your vowels line up together, uh, and then you, in other contexts, you'll be, you'll be asked to sing quickly. And so um, every scene usually was constructed, there would be a slow introduction, uh, a slow aria or song, uh, and then there'd be a, f a bridge passage, which might be faster, and then a fast part, which, was, which you had, it was called a cabaletta, the word caballo is there, as you will, look, or you will recognize the word horse, because as if you were riding on a horse, and that's where you show off how fast you can sing, and then you usually sing that twice, and then how you can make variations. Adal Giza doesn't get any of that. No. Adal Giza basically gets the slow introduction to a non-existent theme, all right? So she's got to get it all in here. Okay, just give me two bars there, Cameron, and now set me up, all right? You've come to this forest, and you've been drawn into the forest, a little bit like Tatiana. Tatiana's sitting at home writing this letter, and she's been drawn in to, by, by this inexorable attraction, you've been drawn back into that forest, right? And you have two problems, right? You're in love, mm -hmm. and uh, you're the wrong. You guys are not. Uh, he's a Roman, uh, yeah. and you're not, right? Mm -hmm. So the big problem. <laughs> it wouldn't be an opera if there were not a problem. <laughs> okay. I like the longer zzz, go. Zzz, go. I agree. You do? I do. I should have done it longer. Yeah. yeah. Out. Great, great. We agree. Zgombra is so much more expressive than zgombra. Zgombra, really? Yep. Like a, like, a, like a Shakespearean actress. Zgombra y la sacra selva. Zgombra. Even longer. Zgombra. Zgombra. In other 
words, the forest is empty because there was a religious, a, a religious service going on, which was, of course, normal. Okay, now go to the next one. So spirar non vista. How about a bar piano? Okay, so I'm going to go back to dove a me sofferse, all right? And that, it says lento, so let's say, just for argument's sake, that we're going to do everything slowly. Even as the, as the emotions mount, you're going to hold a tempo. Dove a me sofferse la prima volta quel fatal romano. Uh, practice at home counting and not singing and knowing every from a point of view of solfege and rhythm so that you are absolutely strict even if there's no orchestra mm -hmm. why do i say that because uh sometimes the secret of the delivery is actually in the rhythms that the composer wrote um what what do people do when they shouldn't they say oh well there's no orchestra and the conductor's not conducting so uh, i'll just sing this however i want uh fine when you're a great star of course you'll do it and everyone will say how wonderful you are but you are better knowing that, really knowing it as it is written, so that if you take a freedom, you know that you're taking it, which is quite different than, from, just, making it than up. just making it up. Right. And I, why do I say do it while you're not singing? It's so that no vocal considerations get in your way, uh, or you, you don't have to compromise anything because, oh, well, I have to get this note, or I have to get around. It's just dry, like this. And, the person whom I heard articulate this was the way she studied was the person who was always talked about as being the most spontaneous and greatest singing actress in the history of opera. And of course, that's Maria Callas. And I was in Juilliard. I heard all of the master classes live. Okay, I knew her. She said one day, she said, I study everything that way. I put myself in a straitjacket. That's the word, the word she used, straitjacket. And the straitjacket was she had to know intellectually every beat and where every note was before she would even go on the stage. So I recommend you do that. So you take this out very dryly. Dove ha messo ferse la prima volta quel fatal romano che mi rende rubella al tempio al Dio. And when you can do that, then if you want to take some freedom, then we can discuss it. Yeah. All right, let's try that. Qui, dove a me. I like, by the way, I like doubling the M, but uh, that's personal. Uh, uh, you are allowed to, there's uh, the word a, which means to, me, which means me, to, me. But you are allowed to, to put two M's, a me, when you have a, we have a word of a single, just a single letter, and not required, it's called, uh, well, it has a word in Italian, doppiamento sintattico, which means just doubling a consonant, basically. I like it. I just share that with you. You don't have to do it, but a dove a me sofferse speaks a little bit more than dove a me. Dove a me sofferse. A me sofferse, yeah. Okay, so try qui, and we're going to go very nice and slowly. Okay. Qui dove a me sofferse la prima Well, you don't get sharp here. Volta. No, la, la, la prima volta. La prima volta. Can you play it? Yeah, be sure that. La, la prima volta. Quel fatto romano. That's it, that's it. Keep it focused. Che mi rende romano. Che mi rende romano. Important not to get out of tune there, yeah. yep, because bel canto includes singing in tune, all right? <laughs> and it's not so easy. There's no orchestra to support you there, right? Mm -hmm. And the truth comes out, al dio. Thank goodness, right? Okay. All right, now go keep going. Fosse l'ultima almeno. Fosse 
And I'll go right away, Cameron. And again. So this is another place I want you to go home and study. One, two, three, four. Make, and make, your, make yourself obey yourself. Yes. All right, and then then we can discuss yeah. where we're going with it. All right, um, how about irresistible? Play the bar before that, please, Cameron. One and two. Irresistible forza. Practice it in one tempo. Yep. Now, then you can say, well, that's too slow. All right, do it faster, but keep, keep a consistent, right. In other words, the rhythm is a part of the expression. Mm -hmm. Okay, now Cameron starts with this now. Largo. Now, you hear that? Those of you who like Verdi will recognize that, will, will hear that a thousand times in Verdi operas. It is always meant to be a tear. Sometimes it's a little tear. And then when it's King Philip II of Spain, who is the who is the dominant force of the entire empire of the Spanish Empire, it's ba 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 ba. But it goes through Verdi until the end. The Requiem, it goes through Aida, Otello, and even in a comic way in Falstaff. So here it is, Bellini created it. There it is. Now here's your aria and your camera and the aria. Okay, so I want to say two things. It says a piacere, which means to somebody's pleasure. I don't know if it's your pleasure, my pleasure, the audience's pleasure, or Bellini's pleasure, but what it means is that there is not a strict tempo. Mm -hmm. However, I would still basically uh, keep, the keep the proportions correct. Okay. Now, when you say day, this, there are two days. What it means is the plural of gods, and this is day, which is an exclamation when you're calling to someone attention and that's what this is and it has an exclamation point and in my opinion you there's day which is calling uh to who dio because she says then oh dio and then there's protege me which is the verb protect me uh, i just feel if you do that that it's all about it's all about your beautiful sound which is great because we are doing bel canto but if you did bel canto plus grammar i would be in ecstasy all right so so day or maybe it's not loud, but day, but it has it has a vocative function. You're calling day protege me o Dio. So every word, even in the context of that, mm -hmm. has a has a grammatical function. Yep. Could you try that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Again. Make sure that your last note is, is successful. Now, in that you're taking a breath anyway, which you should be doing, use the last note to send you on your way. Okay, the second day, the one on the F. <laughs> no, no, don't go back so far that we... Jimmy. In other words, put it out there so that we understand. Protege me. We don't want to... Protege me. Yeah, 
In other words, not, not precious. Not precious. Not precious. Now you breathe then, okay? Okay. Okay, now protegi from there, Cameron. Beautiful sound, fabulous. Where's the double B on Abbi? It was not there. It was not there. He was having a lunch. Grande Bear. He's had enough time for his lunch now. Yeah. Grande uh, Abbi Pieta. That's a double B. Abbi Pieta is a single B, but there doesn't is not a word there. Abbi Pre. Abbi Pieta. Okay. Grandio. Okay, now, I said earlier in the class, mm -hmm. be sure you can end the phrase well. Yeah. So you don't want to use up all of your breath and everything right, at the right. beginning, and then you're dang at the end, right? We want you to finish it well. When you finish it well, it sounds like the whole phrase was good. If you run out of breath, they forget the first part. They remember the end. Yeah. Now, uh, did you take a breath? I didn't that time. But I you might that. consider it, and, uh, and call us again, say it doesn't, you, you, you breathe when you have to. It doesn't matter. If you take a breath, it's how you take a breath. So that if you take your breath, you can motivate it. You motivate the text, you motivate the emotion. Uh, you should practice this both ways, with and without, so that you know how to do it with, yeah. when you need it. Okay, abbi pieta, right there. And you see, you've got plenty to go, right? Then you're ready. Then you're ready. It's, it's already abbi pieta. Anyway, there's a comma. Abbi pieta, perduta, perduta io so. Yeah. It makes sense. Okay, last time. Abbi. That's good. And finish, finish with attitude. Io so. That's yeah. That's it. So that you that you show it. It's just, so yeah. Perduto io so. Instead of giving up. Right. Perduto io so. How you end it? And because you have a big thing to sell here, without a high note, without a big climax, without anything else. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Thank Fabulous you. voice. Thank you, Karen. Okay, one more to go. Uh, here's Noah Beinart, and Javier is back at the keyboard. And German now, you're getting Das Rheingold, so Erda. Come on out, Noah. There she is. Hi. Welcome aboard. Okay, as you know, the ring takes 20 hours. You'll get a lovely five minutes of it now. This is Erda, who is Mother Earth. Okay, she appears in Rheingold. Uh, she comes back a little later in the, uh, in, the, in the course of time. Okay, and Botan, who is the Zeus of the gods, uh, goes to ask her advice, or sometimes she just shows up and gives it to him. Okay, and uh, she ha because she is Mother Earth, she has wisdom and foreknowledge. And she's going to predict the Goethe Demerung. She's going to predict the, the twilight of the gods. She's going to predict that the gods are going to come to an end someday. Because why? She sees it all before it happens. Okay? Ready to go? Okay. Javier?
I warn you, that's what it is, till the end. Do you have it, uh, Happy? It's not really an opera, first of all. <laughs> but he did not write operas, and he put all of his concepts and go into drama, poetry, structure, and all that. So people don't get arias. This is as, pretty much as close as it you get, right? Uh, so she's, she appears out of the earth, and she gives this weapon. So beautiful, beautiful voice, fantastic voice, and great presence. And I want you to use that presence also uh, for, for Erda. Now, sometimes we'll see Erda's head. I mean, it depends on the thing. But in any case, now, but you're on stage, so I want you to, you know, uh, to feel the extreme, uh, extraordinary power of, of, of Erda. She doesn't sing loudly. She doesn't have to because she understands everything. Uh, and I want to, so it's all, your, your German is very good, and you speak it, I'm sure, or I think you do. If you don't, you will soon. And, uh, and so the, your delivery is good. But I think I can give you a few, a few tips. Again, uh, uh, consonants at the end of words are very important. Right? And I want to get your, I want to get your voice uh, lined up so that it's not too dark, that it's not too back. I, don't, I want you to stay away from the back of your throat. Okay, and I want you to be, even though you, I mean, you are a real alto and you have that rich uh, sound, I want you to stay uh, small and focused because I think that will give the best results. Have you heard that ever? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not, it's not a foreign language. No. Nope. Okay, all right, let's start and I'll try to show you what I mean, all right? Now, first of all, Weiche, comma, Wotan, exclamation point, Weiche. Yes. Now, Weiche in this particular sense means give it, give something out. She's telling him, don't insist on keeping the ring and the gold because this is what's going to ruin you. This is the big lesson, of course, that greed has ruins the world. Very timely. It's always true. It's always true. So, weiche Wotan. Weiche. Weiche is a verb. It's a, it's a command, basically. Give it up. Wotan. By the way, uh, she's born Wotan, a lot of children. What, should we tell everybody that? No, we can't. Yeah. Well, it's not me. It, <laughs> Wotan is like Zeus. He kept going down you know, to the earth and populating the earth. All those Valkyries. She's had eight Valkyries, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's why she knows of what she speaks. Okay, Weicher, got it? Weicher. Make, make, make a separation. Okay. Weicher, and what's his name? Wotan. V verb, his name, verb.
Okay, and now enjoy the separation. Enjoy. Well, weiche Wotan. Weiche is different from weiche. Oh, Maestro told me to separate. Weiche Wotan. Weiche. Use it. Enjoy it. Weiche Wotan. The word fluch is curse, okay? Get a, a flee from the curse of the ring. Pretty strong stuff. So, flee this ring is fluch. Use a, uh, use a, a, a shadow vowel. Fluch, almost. Fluch. Almost you're adding an uh in there. Flee, okay? Flee. Yes. Good, go. High position. Right now, that's good. Try not to get back. Right? Give in. And give me a nice long end and sing the end. Win. Right? It's a... yeah, stay, where, stay where you were. You were in a beautiful place. Give in. That's much better. Now, try not to let the V change the position of the vowel. C connect your, uh, attach your vowels to the, uh, uh, sorry, attach your consonant. Just touch the consonant and make the vowel consistent. Vai dich sein gewin. You see, it's v we don't, I don't go give. Yeah. I don't pull down with it. Yeah, try that. Vai. Yeah, you got to say, Gavin. And when you leave the note, give me a nice long phonating N. Gavin. Gavin. Very good. Okay, next line. Wie alles war. So, before alles, so, wie alles war. As Everything was in English. The alles. Give me a, 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 almost a glottal. The alles war. The alles war. Yeah, right? and alles, alles is, so it's a double L, and you can sing it. Alles, right? I'm singing my L. Al, try that. Sing L. See how long you can sing it? All right? So practice it too long, but so that it becomes a part. Wie alles war. Look, I just put my tongue up there. All, alles. Wie, I don't change the vowel. Wie alles war. Very good. Don't be afraid of it. It's not going to bite. Al, go right to the L. Alles war. Al, practice. Al. Say it. Say it for me. Alles. Alles. You say it perfectly. Same thing. Wie alles war. Right. In fact, the shorter the vowel here, the better you are. Wie alles. I see how I go right to the L. Wie alles war. Yep. Okay, good. That's it. Stay in position now. Okay, so, wie alles war, uh, wie, wie alles war, how everything was, wie alles wird, how everything will be, uh, wie alles sein wird, how it can be, how it will be. So that you're using this, it has a structure, wie alles war, 
two eighth notes. Then vi alles wird is a sixteenth note. Make the difference. Okay. Yeah, and vi all sein wird. Okay. Yeah. So vi alles wird. Except you went back in the throat. Wie alles so, wie alles sein. Here? Okay. Wie alles sein wird, seh ich auch den Wittensee. Now watch out for words that start with W. You don't want to do v, I exaggerate, but you st the V is bringing you below the pitch, yeah. and then when the vowel comes out, it's on the pitch, which sounds like you're scooping, which we don't want. Der ewigen Welt, attach the V, the Welt, to the vowel, don't travel on the consonant. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Der ewigen Welt is different from der ewigen Welt. It's inevitable that you're going to be below the pitch yeah. then. Okay, seh ich auch, three words, one position, please. Seh was in a great place, stay there. Okay, we just yes, there? wherever you like. <laughs> yes, same position, stay. Very good, you know you did something very good now, I don't know if you realize it, you stayed in one position. Mm -hmm. When you find the right position, stay there. Okay, so that, I mean, there is, basically the concept which was born in the bel canto era was that there was one, there is only one position. Italian has five vowels, as we do, uh, seven by some counts because there's an open A and a closed A, and a, uh, there's an open O and a closed O, but it's all in the same position. You don't change around, A, A, E, O, U. That's Italian. A, E, I, O, U is bad singing, which is taught regularly in our conservatories and many other places. A, E, I, O, U. And the right the position, how the reference is E, because you can't monkey around with it. You can't change E. E is E. And so, uh, you know, like at violins practicing and then they check their intonation by going back to their opening strings. E is your frame of reference. You start by singing E, and then at, just sing the other vowels in that position. E, uh, here's my position. E, do that. E, okay. A, uh, A, O, O. If you were an Italian, you'd do it all by yourself, but you have to work <laughs> at it, right? Now, so this is what you want. You were, ze is a great place to be, right? Ze ich auch der ewigen Welt. I'm, I'm there, right? And if it's the right position, stay there. Zay. Okay, go. Good, stay. X, stay. Okay, so Urvala. Kama, yeah. Erda, her name is Erda, which means earth. Urvala, Erda, Mant. She's referring to herself in the third person. Yeah. She says, uh, uh, Erda is warning you, basically. Urvala, okay, so now you're in your Z position, Urvala. Urvala, I would like a comma. Urvala Erda. It's just not a lot, it's just a little bit. Yep. That I just let it flow a little bit more. In other words, you've had this very solemn beginning. Now she's telling the story. So, Drei. Yes.
mein Schoß. Keep it here, keep it here. Okay, drei, drei. You can also do drei if you want, because it's a, it's, it, it, there's a shadow vowel to be used if you want. Drei der Tochter. Drei. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, and. Good support. Now, Zeya was exemplary. That's perfect. Now, Zeya, right? Sing was ich already in the position of Zeya. Okay. Out of the beginning of the bar. Yeah. So, one. Excellent. Now stay in that position. Yep, yep, yep. That's good, good, good. Now one and Okay, so what she says here, she has doch höchste Gefahr, the highest danger leads me to come to you today. And the motive in there, because you have to, when you learn your motives in the ring, you know who they're talking about. She's talking about Alberich, and she's talking about the whole, the whole problem uh, of, of the ring. Of course, uh, the, she wants to get him away from this obsession with the gold. But so he, she, uh, Wagner quotes something else. She doesn't use his name, she doesn't use the word, but we know what she's talking about. So now it has a little more urgency. Doch höchste Gefahr führt mich, okay? Slightly, slightly faster, okay? So, um, uh, let's play the first bar at the bottom of the page. Both of them in the same place, and the R is not going to is not going to interfere with that. Not her. Don't change the position. Good. Very good. I recommend just slightly turning it into a a little more her. Little, just a little bit. That's a, not, not make a, and remember, it's three times. Usually, things that are uh, have to do with uh, well, every religion, every primitive religion, it has symbol three. The three times: hörer, uh, listen, hörer, uh, listen, hörer. Uh. So you have to build it, not with volume, but with inner conviction. Okay, we'll try again. You need a conductor for this. Why? Because alles was ist endet. It has much more weight. So, so uh, she's not now. She, what is she? She says, "Listen, listen, listen." Now, what she's she's telling him, everything that is is will come to an end. All right. So alles was ist endet. Okay. So here's the bar before. So one bar. Okay, so now build that tension for me. Uh, the, uh, it's an agachic accent. One, two, three, four. By the delay, that's what gives it its tension. Now, you don't have to do anything especially vocally except stay in the right position and say, was ist and not was ist. Okay, you have to separate that. Alles, comma, was ist. Does it mean you take a breath? Maybe not, but you have to show the comma. Alles, was ist, ended. Because the, 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 the sentence is, alles endet. Everything will end, or everything ends. But alles, 
which is, was ist, ended. So we need the sense of the commas. Okay? Now, big T. And that actually stop the vowel and put the T on it to end it for me. And now this is another one, two, three, four. I just yep. that bar perhaps have you so on. And he I Okay, now it can have more meaning. Ein düstre Tag, a dark day, dämmert. With dämmert, that's Goethe Dämmerung. That is, that, that's the, the twilight. That is, a, that's a, when the, it, 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 you can have Abenddämmerung, which is the day, or you can have, you can have in the morning. But in German, the, 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 that hazy light between night and morning and afternoon and evening. And that's what she's, she's telling us. What, it's, she's telling us what's going to happen, you know, 16 hours later. That is the Goethe Dämmerung. It is the gods who are in their twilight. Ein düstre Tag dämmert. Den has to be a closed A. Den is closed. Den is open. There are two different words. Den. So be sure you don't uh, don't neglect that. Den Goethe. Right? Ah, so ein düstre. We do at the beginning of that bar. So one. There's a better way to do this now. First of all, it's den ring. Yeah. Yep, okay. Den, n. Don't sing ring louder. Sing den more. Okay. And then don't give more. Den ring. <clears throat> I can't do it. It's not my talent. But den ring is different from saving. Den ring. Right? It's vocal. I mean, technically, it's den ring. Now, the, the word, of course, is den ring. Oh, ring is the more important word, but Wagner's done that already. He's written it in a position that you can't do opposite. So, den ring, den, yeah. Den ring. Better, good, but say, close the A. Den ring, yeah. Den ring. Good, but it can be better. I want not more on the top note. Den Ring, we all think we have to give more on the top. It, it is more. Den Ring. Den Ring. Okay, and now do it with the kind of good, correct feeling that you had without letting your voice explode. Okay? Den Ring. Okay, and you're going to have a little bit. R, r, den Ring. Den Ring. Yep. That's what, it's hard to work. You have to work on this because you, it's, right, it's going right into another uh, another tessitura. Den ring, den ring. Flip it. Den ring. That's right. Now say the words. Say, say. Den ring. Now with that. Den ring. Den ring. Okay. Now go to on the last line. Ich warnte dich. I warned you. That's a mother speaking. Uh, it's more, more, more ominous. I warned you. Ich warnte dich. Du weißt genug. You know enough. Right? I've, I've told you. All right? Ich warte. Not genug. Don't double the end. Okay. Yeah. Now, because it's your 
last line. You have to make something special happen. Sinn in Sorg und Furcht. Furcht is fear. And then she sinks back into the ground. <laughs> He's pretty impressed after that, right? Sinn in Sorg und Furcht. As if you were an act at Shakespearean. Use your exit line, okay? Mm -hmm. Stop, actually stop. Sin in Sorg. Sin in Sorg und Furcht. And whatever you do, you finish with <laughs> Furcht. Now, now don't make the break, but remember what it was like when you did. Sin in Sorg. And Erta goes back into the earth, and we're stuck with it. <laughs> and it's all this wonderful, it's very good. Night. So I thank you. I thank you all for coming. This is the first time. I'm only 10 minutes over time. I'm usually a half an hour, 45 minutes. So I, uh, I hope that you've had a good time. I hope this has been useful to you. And I know that you're going to be hearing a lot from all of these singers uh, in, here in Ravinia, but also in many other places because there's a lot of terrific talent here. Thank you so much, and I will look forward to the next time. You're welcome.